Yeah, good morning. Hey now, PASW staff, clients, and friends joining us. We are at Wednesday's class. Already it's been great. We looked at the Polish pianist and composer Chopin and his lovely music. And then we looked at your film scoring assignment for A Man and a Woman. And those have come in already. So we're going to look at those on Friday. And that that turned out very well, actually. Um, so we're going to coast a little bit through the city and go to kind of a suburb a little bit. It's still it's still a big city in its own right, but we're going to we're going to look at a theater first of all, but but before we even look at the theater, we need to talk about where we're going to go. We can't just be floating in Koreatown or the Hollywood sign. We need we need a base, right? So let's go from Hollywood to Pasadena. We're going to talk a little bit about Pasadena today. And Pasadena translates to Crown of the Valley. That's pretty much what it means of the valley. And there are a lot of valleys, and that's where the San Gabriel Mountains are. It's beautiful over there. Um, uh, and Pasadena is about 11 miles north of downtown. And if you know that little, um, it's the Arroyo Seco roadway. It's a freeway, but it's a roadway uh, which takes you into Pasadena. You've probably been on that kind of little roadway. That's the first freeway in California. Uh, 1940, that is the first freeway uh in western america so um it's a little dangerous but um it's it's a little bit fun so uh pasadena is uh uh well before we get to the pasadena playhouse because that's what we're going to be talking about today it's uh it won't be too much about music but it's going to be about culture and acting um and this is probably something diana and david really know about but i just thought i'd kind of talk about it because reading about it i was like what we should know a little bit more about this theater um but but let's back up here. Let's not let's not rush here. Um, we need we need to think about and this is this is what I was thinking about last night. You know we talk a lot about movies, the evolution of movies, how you know vaudeville and stage and Sid Grauman last week with the Chinese theater and the Egyptian and D W Griffith making the first feature film for the most part. This is all you know 1900s to 1920s, you know, right around there. The evolution of editing and film reels, that's all well and good. What's going on with the actors, though? What happens to the stage people? They, uh, they don't like this. This is, this is turning into, I mean, by the 19, you know, by the mid-1900s, you know, they, they, I mean, they don't like it so much where they, they even start a group around 1912. They start a group and a, a period's known as the Little Theater Movement. And this developed in multiple cities, not just Pasadena or LA, throughout the US. And it was kind of a cause to maybe save, save the theater in a sense. But if you think about when movies started coming out in the early 20th century, it was not something anybody wanted to be a part of, especially actors. There was this one book that I read where this guy came from New York and he was desperate for work. And I think they paid him $100 at, uh, for, to shoot something just for a day, which is a lot back then. This is the early 1900s. And he was like, yeah, sure, but don't use my name. And he felt like, you know, violated in the sense. I mean, you, they, you prostitute yourself to be in movies. This was not a high, you know, now everyone would sell their grandmother out to be in a movie. But this was not something admirable or even something that you would talk about without feeling ashamed or embarrassed because it was just low, low brow. And, and, and you can kind of see it because some of it is just ridiculous. Those early movies are just kind of gags. And, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it's fun. But, I mean, I, I can see, you know, if you were studying Shakespeare on stage, you'd be like, well, well you know, why do I want a frying pan hit on my head? Is that... Uh, well, little did they know that by the by the 1915s and the 1920s, it would be glamour and money, and that would be enticing. So it was less taboo then. So that's just a little reference point. So when this little theater group starts, a guy, a very important guy, comes comes out of this place and creates this this little theater world. So, and he creates it around 1916. And Gilmore Brown is the name. We're going to be talking about Gilmore Brown today. He's a writer, director, and he starts producing plays at this little burlesque theater um, called the Gilmore Brown Players. And this was established kind of in the, this community playhouse in Pasadena. 
um, in, in 1917. So this is before it becomes a Pasadena Playhouse. So he starts this little theater in Pasadena, um, probably probably where that where it is now on El Molino. Um, starts the theater group and gets a lot of funding from East Coast people. And uh, again, probably just... Uh, uh, and, and from lo- wealthy Pasadena, Pasadenians, um, and he purchases land at 38, uh, 39 South El Molino. That's where the playhouse stands today. Let's just say it's still active and well and alive today, so it's good. going to be a good story, t- story ending. Um, and they open it in 1925, so it takes years for him to get, much like Dorothy Chandler we talked about, it, it took almost 10 years to get that venue, but she started the fundraising. So it's just, you know, things take a lot of time. Um, so by 1925, they have the space finally that they, that they have where they can do this acting, you know, acting little world. Um, 1925, Great Gatsby comes out. That's a huge book that's going to change the, change the world. Hollywood still does a, a version of Great Gatsby every year pretty much, but um, that's what happens. And then 1925, Calvin Coolidge becomes the first president um, to give his inauguration on the radio. That was huge to hear the president talk on the radio. And then with the movies in 25, you have Ben Hur, which we've talked about, the old, old Ben Hur, and then um, Lon Chaney with Phantom of the Opera. So those are the movies that are coming out. So they're becoming, at that point, they're becoming, you know, the movies are becoming a little bit better than just. Um, you know, little gags, but that that's what's going on. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the Pasadena Playhouse too, I mean, uh, is, is something very similar to the Egyptian theater and something, you know, not to, um, not to brag, but something that only we can do over here is that they, the Pasadena Playhouse has a beautiful courtyard, just like the Egyptian theater has a beautiful courtyard outside where you can have drinks or have, you know, do whatever you want before the show starts. That's because we have the perfect weather to do it. If you think of, um, you know, people, of course, do that in Chicago and New York, but then depending on the weather or what, what's going on, no one's going to want to hang out outside. So that's also a good selling point for people to see, well, what's the buzz? Why is everyone hanging out in that court? What is, oh, they're, they're waiting to see a play. It's almost a good um, way of marketing, you know, a selling point. And the playhouse is so beautiful, designed by Elmer Gray. We've talked about him a little bit. Designed Beverly Hills Hotel, uh, which is gorgeous. Huntington Library, um, Caltech, many other places. All, all uh, another great LA architect. And it hosted uh, world premieres from people like Eugene, Eugene O'Neill did uh, premiered there. Um, Noel Coward premiered his plays there. F. Scott Fitzgerald, who we, who we talked about, and Tennessee Williams. I mean, the most famous playwrights in the in the world going on would have their works premiered at the Playhouse. And because it was going so well in the 20s, he decided, uh, Brown decided uh, to make it into a college there because there were little, there were different stages there. And, you know, it was a complete creative workshop for him to work at. So he decided, well, why not why not create something where people can actually study and it can be accredited um, in a way that would make it, um, you know, real legitimate. And a lot of celebrities got their start and were discovered there. Raymond Burr, Victor Mature, uh, Ernest Borgnine, Charles Bronson, William Holden, even Gene Hackman and Dustin Hoffman all study there, got a lot of their education there. I mean, it was an amazing program that offered all these, you know, dict- uh, diction. And I mean, it was just, and and also another thing that had, that was very, very rare. It's one of the first companies in California, at least, um, to experiment with the, this, the theater in the round. We They call it theater in the round, which is where the audience can surround, um, is surrounded by the, the you know, stage, which was kind of revolutionary. I mean, that's, that goes back to Rome and, and all that other stuff. But in California, he, he really wanted that design at his theater, which was, I think it's really cool. And Brown's audacity was just amazing. Um, also, one of the reasons that, that got it so much legitimacy, the Playhouse, was that he was one of the only only people and that were, they were the only venues to do Shakespeare's canon so that's performing 37 plays most of all of Shakespeare's works he had performed there no other theater in America could claim that that 
the Shakespeare complete canon. Um, so the state legislator uh, voted the Pasadena Playhouse the official state theater of California in 1937. After Brown died in the 60s, it, it went bankrupt, and uh, but the city purchased the building in the 70s, and um, it went through different stages. But it's it's great. It's very it's doing really well today. It's it's a great place to see theater and a real. It's very cool um, to know that we have legit. You know, a, a lot of people put down. I mean, rightly so that you know L.A. doesn't have a theater scene. It's Chicago, and New York, and and that's true. There's there's you know more more exciting things happening there. But we do have one of the best theaters stage theaters in the world really here and that's still thriving from 1925 uh that has super legitimacy to it and um and they put on shows all the time i've only been once i think and um you know that that was okay it wasn't a great show but i mean it was what i do remember is how great the theater was and beautiful and walking down and how well preserved it is and uh um, so we do have one of the best theaters in the world, even though it's not maybe a theater city. It's more of a movie city here, but it, it's still really cool, and it's in beautiful Pasadena. Take a drive out there. It's not that far out there. Um, it's, it's gorgeous. There's Old Town. There's all these uh, wonderful, you know, the San Gabriel Mountains are beautiful. Um, you know, I sound like a tourist guide, but you, you get what I'm saying. Okay, love you. This was uh, this was fun to explore a different different part of LA, and um, uh, yeah, see you tomorrow.